Hume's Guillotine by Camilla Chadder. In his celebrated passage from Treatise of Human Nature, the Scottish philosopher David Hume gives the classic formulation of what has since remained one of the central questions in moral philosophy. How can we possibly move from a descriptive statement about how things stand, for example an is statement, to a prescriptive statement telling us what ought to be done, an ought statement? Or put simply, how can we derive an ought from an is? Hume evidently thinks we cannot. Many thinkers since have also agreed with him. They believe in Hume's guillotine or Hume's law. This guillotine has said to decisively separated the world of fact from the world of value. The problem that Hume has highlighted is due in part to two strong but conflicting convictions that many of us share. On the one hand, we believe that we live in a physical world that we can explain in principle fully uh, by laws discoverable by science, a world of objective fact from which value is excluded. On the other hand, we feel in making moral judgments, we are stating something that is true about the world, something we can know and which would be true regardless of how we may feel. For example, there is a war in Libya. Many deaths are caused when there is a war. Therefore, we ought to stop this war. And for Hume, this, these views and these convictions would appear to be incompatible. And if we accept Hume's law, we cannot um, ground our moral evaluations in the value-free world as described by science. We must look within ourselves to find the origins of our moral sentiments. Hume himself was not unaware of the significance of his observation. The logically unbridgeable gap between fact and value that Hume seems to open up cast doubt over the very status of many important ethical claims and thus lies at the heart of modern philosophy. Hume's law is often confused with a related but distinct view put forward by the English philosopher G. E. Moore in his Principia Ethica 1903. Moore accused earlier philosophers of committing what he called a naturalistic fallacy, which involves identifying ethical concepts with natural concepts. Thus good, for instance, is taken to mean the same thing as, say, pleasurable. But Moore alleged it is still open to ask whether what is pleasurable is also good. The key difference with uh, Moore and Hume is that Hume is looking at reasoning, at how we come to our ethical conclusions, and Moore is focused on using ethical concepts when discussing natural concepts such as the way the world is. Thank you for watching and please visit my website www.camillachada.com.